Okay. Cheers and salutations. Welcome, everyone, to Hard Lens Media. I'm your host, Kit Cabello, and this is a special late evening live stream for all you wonderful people. Uh, but there's been some breaking news, especially in regards towards a recent interview that RFK Jr. Uh, has done with comedian uh, Dave Smith. And I encourage everyone to please check out the video in its full entirety. But there's been a lot of talk about RFK Jr. potentially joining the Libertarian Party and overall what his campaign could mean to Biden and Trump. However, this recent interview with RFK Jr. seems to not only have challenged uh, him, especially in regards to his stance on Israel, but more or less, dare I say, it could be a gut check to his overall campaign as there are, is a growing anti-war movement that is happening as the crisis in Gaza is still ongoing. Uh, people are still dying of starvation. People are still being exposed to the elements. And we have a couple of highlight videos from this interview. And again, please, everyone, if you haven't done so already, I encourage all of you to at least check out Dave Smith's full YouTube channel. Uh, I encourage all of you to do so. Um, again, please be sure to subscribe and follow him on all of his social media. Uh, and I will be posting a link to the full video in the description box below. So please, folks, uh, support the original uh, video and check it out. Uh, there's a lot more to it, but it's nearing the second, uh, at least middle half part of the interview where the discussion of Israel is brought up, as well as the crisis in Gaza, as well as the infamous, well, silence. So before we get started, I think it's it's only important for uh, everyone to please be sure to check us out on all of our social media platforms, be it YouTube, Rockfin, Rumble, Odyssey, and Kick. Also follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram as well. And Hard Lens Media, our main show is live every Monday through Friday at 9 a.m. Central on YouTube. Uh, again, always on YouTube. Rockfin, Rumble, Odyssey, and Kick, Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. in the morning. So there you go. All right, but without further ado, I think it's really important that we bring up this article just to just to start things off interesting before we dive headfirst into what is possibly maybe the end of RFK Jr.'s campaign. But then again, we, we are still fresh in, in, in this election cycle. But uh, in regards for his defense of or either that being associated with any kind of anti-war movement, uh, his stance on Israel is pretty off-putting. So let's go ahead and first pull up this article right here. It's from The Hill. Democrats and Republican elite fear RFK Jr.'s growing path to victory. Well, let's face it, we are looking at a potential rise of a new third party. Uh, Americans across the board, 50 percent identify themselves as independents. So let's go ahead and bring this up here uh, again. 34. That may very well become the symbolic magic number in the November presidential election in what is shaping up to be a three person contest between President Joe Biden, the senile old bat, former President Donald Trump, the guy who triggers all the liberals into having panic attacks and independent candidate RFK Jr. The question becomes which candidate can garner 34 percent of the popular vote or higher. The Electoral College supersedes popular vote here, folks. But anyways, anyways, I digress. Uh, while many experts still dismiss the possibility of an independent or third-party candidate winning the election, there seems to be a bit more hand-wringling and uh, wrestling uh, past the graveyard among mo both Democrat and Republican operatives, uh, most especially as there's now the possibility that Kennedy may run on the Libertarian Party ticket. And we will actually get a different kind of perspective from another Libertarian in regards to how they view RFK Jr., so we shall see. It might upset some of you, but it's important to see the whole perspective. And I have been reaching out to some of my colleagues who are libertarians and overall what their thoughts are for RFK Jr. and whether or not him being associated with the party is a good thing. I don't think that is the case because it might cause more harm than good. But that's just my opinion, and everyone's entitled to have an opinion. 
Outline on this site earlier uh, this week in a piece titled RFK Jr.'s Possible Libertarian Bid Rankles Democrats. The possibility is duly noted, as is the growing fear of certain Democrat operatives. And trust me, it's not just Democrats who are viewing that possibility with a great deal of nervousness. It is Republicans as well. Well, it's a two-party system, and the two-party system has made it abundantly clear what they think about independence. After all, we here at Hard Lens Media have covered the Illinois Libertarian Party, the Illinois Green Party, socialists and independents who, are, who always run for U.S. seats or state seats or county seats. And the story is always shockingly the same. They have to get at least 50,000 signatures or around that number. And then it's a fight to even secure having ballot access because the Illinois Democratic Party and to an extent the Illinois Republican Party work hand in hand to be as draconian as possible to prevent third parties in my state to being on the ballot. And well. More or less, the story is the same in different states. Some states are far more harsher than Illinois, others far more lenient. But no matter what happens, Democrats and Republicans within the establishment surprisingly work together. However, it's important to see a different perspective first. Before we bring up the Dave Smith and RFK Jr. interview, let's just hear this perspective in regards to how other libertarians might view an RFK Jr. candidacy within the Libertarian Party softening up libertarians right now and i know that some people might be like what are you talking about but there's this this national conversation around libertarian circles about what if rfk were to run as a libertarian it's been brought up in the in the the mainstream media several times even with him is and he said you know i've talked to the chairman a woman the chairwoman of the libertarian party it's a possibility we would have ballot access we'd be able to be on all ba- on the all ballots across the country this and that and this and that now the vast majority of libertarians when they hear this go ha ha Fuck that guy, right? Mm -hmm. Like he was really good on medical. He's a medical malpractice lawyer, dude. That's what he does. Okay. Good on the COVID vaccine issue. But it wasn't, and I need people to understand this. And it wasn't just that he was like, fuck this regime. It was that he was like coming from the medical malpractice world where he was like, well, this was rushed and there could be an issue here. He said specifically several times, if this thing had gone through all the trials and could show that it wasn't hurting people, I'd have no problem with it at all. You know, it wasn't it wasn't the regime that he had a problem with. It was the the mm. rush of the vaccines. So he's good on this issue, this medical this medical freedom issue. He's been really good on this medical freedom issue. He's a fucking eco fascist entirely to the point of where he wants businesses shut down and thrown out of the market if they don't comply with climate change agenda. Okay, he said this repeatedly. He's a socialist monetary guy. He's a fucking old school Democrat, dude. He said how he said we need to use government backed bonds to bail out the housing crisis, dude. Like, like, holy shit. Why hasn't anyone else ever thought about that in the United States before? Oh, uh, maybe every fucking president in history has already done this. And that's why we're in the situation we're in today. He was not good on alternative currencies. He's yeah. terrible on guns. Now, this is a fucking do or die issue for me. Okay. If you aren't a, a, a an extremist when it comes to the Second Amendment, I don't want you in office. I want you out. I want every I want every single Republican that's not an extremist on the two A primaried. If they can't be primaried, I want a libertarian to run against them. That is so. So it's a no for me, dog. Right. But I've been seeing some names you might recognize softening up uh, an RFK run. Now, let's pause here for a second. Uh, As it stands right now, the Libertarian Party does have about at least 40 states secure for ballot access. They're the only major party to really have its act together in regards for ballot access and what that means for the candidate, uh, especially whoever they do pick, because they are still in a nomination process, uh, will have a good foothold in regards towards reaching out to potential voters and possibly making an impact uh, in the election cycle of 2024. Now, the Greens are still going through their process, and as it stands right now, uh, both RFK Jr. and Dr. Cornell West are both running as independents. Now, this whole idea of RFK Jr. being part of the Libertarian Party, uh, it is rather um, kind of a red flag. Because he had ample opportunity to at least introduce himself or at least associate himself with the Libertarian Party, at least in 2023, where you could have built a larger, far more stable infrastructure to do so. However, uh, people who I've reached out to who are in the Libertarian Party uh, are not a fan of his, well, pro-war stance with Israel, as well as other issues that uh, don't line up with the Libertarian Party. 
And because of that, RFK Jr. made the foolish idea of running in a Democratic primary, which, again, because of everything that we're seeing now play out, is one big waste of time. The Democratic primary is a foregone conclusion. Somebody should tell that to Dean Phillips, Marianne Williamson, good old Jank Uger, that they're wasting their time. It is just one big waste of time. But if my, my disappointment in third parties this year is wh why have you been fumbling so much? You've had ample opportunity, especially in 2020, to really build something, to really make something monumental, and it's been nothing but a fart in the wind. Nonetheless, let's continue on. But this is funny. This is going to be really funny to some people on here right now, and this might make some people mad, and I don't give a fuck. I don't care if it makes you mad, okay? I have seen with my own eyes the chair of the Mises Caucus, Michael Heiss, I have seen with my own eyes the chair of the Libertarian National Committee, Angela McArdle, with my own eyes in private channels. And, I've, and I heard it in public tonight on Dave Casey, Dave vs. Goliath show. They are fucking softening up caucus members to an RFK run. I mean, in a, listen, we all know that we're not going to do very well in the presidential election this year. So why don't we rent the party out? to no. rfk jr so that we can get ballot access and money and donors and all this stuff right which doesn't sound like a good idea now there's a little bit more to that video but i think it's important that we bring up this video that's been gaining traction i've been seeing my colleagues such as uh misty as well as do dissidents rbn and everyone else in social media sharing this infamous eight minute and 44 second video as well as well as the pin drop silence so dave smith recently had rfk jr on his show and there was a whole range of topics they talked about but around at least i want to just get this correct 48 minutes and 33 seconds in the interview and uh, maybe it's a little bit earlier in is when the crisis in gaza and israel is brought up so first let's bring up this portion of the interview think the one that's right now gaining a lot of traction on social media folks you're about to hear a moment of silence what what does hamas want hamas has said what it wants is you know the end of israel well that, I, I mean at different times they've said that at certain points they've also said that they would accept 1967 borders so it would have been great if israel had taken uh, them up on that when they said it uh, okay, listen, let me just israel ask you, did take them let up me ask you this in like 2008 and 2001 and they refused now, I'm still waiting for that interview between Max Blumenthal and RFK Jr. Whenever that's going to happen, it'd be great. Remember, I was all on board for uh, Dr. Ho Tez. Dr. Ho Tez, remember him? I uh, have that interview or that debate with RFK Jr. was on the Joe Rogan show, and that's never coming to fruition. It's rather sad that we're not going to see the Max Blumenthal RFK Jr. interview. Who's still waiting for that? RFK Jr., you ever going to take up uh, Max's offer for that? Do you, sir, do you have, I, I don't agree with that, but okay. Do you have concerns about um, the the level of Israeli influence in our, our politics here in the United States of America? Now, hold on. We're going to rewind that, and we're just going to count the seconds. We're going to rewind that. Listen carefully refused do you sir do you have I, I don't agree with that but okay do you have concerns about um the the level of israeli influence in our our politics here in the united states of america now remember money in politics is dictating our country so if you're a diehard democrat voter or a diehard republican voter listen to me very carefully you are never ever going to have the seat at the table the lobby groups control everything. Big oil, big pharma, the healthcare insurance industry, the military industrial complex, the prison industrial complex. You name it, they're there. Wall Street, big banks, hedge fund managers, the top one percenters, including a little known organization that none of you probably ever heard of. It's called APAC. I know I'm blowing your minds and it's associated with Israel. And a long time ago, both Democratic and Republican operatives there kind of gave the warning that, hey, APAC is buying off all our politicians. And there's a reason why the ceasefire hasn't really gained much traction by our leaders. Now, the people, 
who are anti-war and calling for a call for a ceasefire. Yeah, of course, people are saying it, but the politicians, why are the politicians so quiet? Why aren't they saying a single thing? It's because they've been told and been bought to shut up, to shut up. Our media has made it clear. Our politicians on both sides of the aisles have made it clear their own. So one more time, and then we're going to play a counting game. Um, the the level of Israeli influence in our our politics here in the United States of America. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I I don't know. I mean, I I don't Nine. know. Uh, I just I'm not you know I'm not a politician in political office, so I don't see much of that. So you don't I, think like so so in after uh, nine eleven. I mean, listen, I think uh, listen, I think everybody has um you know that, that, that there's so many malevolent influences on Capitol Hill, and they include many nations, and they include many you know corporate. Yeah, but Israel's kind of the big heavyweight. And I counted 10 seconds. How many seconds did you count? But my, my by the way, one more time to rewind. I'm so sorry. If that upsets you, hey, trust me, Anna. The seconds are just very quiet. But I just wonder if he's blinking for help. Oh, I mean, I I don't know. Uh, I just, I'm not, you know, I'm not a politician in political office, so I don't see much of that. So you don't I, think like, so So in after uh, you know, 9-11... I mean, um, the the level of Israeli influence in our our politics here in the United States of America. He's blinking for help. Rabbi Shmoli, help him uh, out. I don't know. <laughs> I, mean, I, I don't know. Uh, I just I'm not you know I'm not a politician in political office, so I don't see much of that. So you don't uh, think like so so in after uh, nine you know, eleven. I mean, listen. I think, uh, listen, I think everybody has, um, you know, that, that, that there's so many malevolent influences on Capitol Hill. And they include many nations and they include many, you know, corporate entities. So, and I, I you know, I want to have a real democracy in our country where you yeah. get money out of politics and the influence out of politics. That's what I would like and have publicly funded elections. Oh, I don't think anybody, but do I think the Israelis have more influence than others? I, I David, I believe that in the, you know, in supporting Israel, that it's important for the United States. And you and I can disagree on that. I believe, and I believe our aid to Israel of $4 billion a year is designed to keep the peace over the war. Sir, oh, you, you've been such a critic and such an effective design. critic. You've been right. you've been such an effective critic of the neoconservatives. I, I am and a I, critic of the neoconservatives. Yes, I know. That's what I just said. But you know that the, these two issues are so, like, intertwined. And I know you know that because I know you know this stuff. But look, uh, well, the, the report. I mean, David, again, uh, I was not. Uh, probably RFK Jr. wasn't really prepared for a kind of interview like this. And look, hey. I can have my disagreements with libertarians, but I also can have my moments where I do agree with them. And right here, RFK Jr. is being called out for the fact that APAC is the most powerful lobby group in Washington, D.C. If not, it's it's up there in the upper echelon. Because I don't see a Russia pact or an Ethiopian pact. I'm pretty sure Mastermind Hour was the one who put that in there. Where is he at? I want to make sure we, we, we get that all set up because... That, hold on, it was actually it was Marvin Vargas there. Cor correction, Marvin Vargas. Hmm, what? Chinese pack, Russia pack, Ethiopian pack? Yes, those other nations. Israel has a very large influence, not only amongst our politicians, but amongst our uh, media, Hollywood. It is, it, it is intertwined. So when it comes down to criticism of Israel, it shouldn't surprise any of us, just the one-sided view. However, things are a little bit different thanks to social media and everyone speaking out. So they can't really hit the pause button. For, I, you know, I, I would vote for World War II. I, I would not vote for any other war. The, the, <sighs> the coward's way out. Yes, yes, yes. All right, everyone. Everyone would fight in World War II. Who doesn't want to punch Hitler in the gut? Okay, come on. It's, it's it's one of those things all of us want to do. It's World War II, I fear, is being turned into that Saturday morning cartoon war. 
because it was easy to identify the bad guys and the good guys. And after all, World War II, Team America saved the day, right? But then no one wants to talk about what we did with all the German scientists or their uh, operatives or how other things kind of happened with the remnants of the Third Reich, right? No, no one wants to talk about the post-war reconstruction. Yes, it's easy to vilify the Soviets, but uh, the Allies weren't so squeaky clean after the Second World War. Okay, it's just it's, it's it's not that Saturday morning cartoon where the bad guy gets defeated and the heroes save the day. No, you could read about that in comic books. The real story is far more depressing. The cons vote for every war. I you're voting for I this war. The opposition to the Afghan war, to the Iraq war. To Panama. Oh, okay, to fine. But Vietnam. listen, I was okay, fine. But this is all I'm saying. The Vietnam. So I, you know, all okay. the wars. Look. But I'm just saying, I don't want to live in a world where it, I think it would be bad for our country. It would be bad for the world to eliminate the only democracy in the Middle well, East. The only. Well, I mean, yeah. yes, eliminating the what? The only democracy in the Middle East. You know, there were other attempts in that region, in in the wider region for democracy. You know, no one wants to talk about the uh, democratic government that was in Iran before uh, big oil, British intelligence and U.S. intelligence undermined it and did a coup and established the Shah. No one wants to talk about that, right? C could you imagine if there was actually a, 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 an Iran that still had that national government, a democratic government? Because here's, here, here's the thing. In theory, according to political science democracies technically kind of sort of can't don't declare war against each other because see it's 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 not normal unless there's a country that is owned by big oil and corporations that see profit and the best way to continue profits is maybe putting in a dictator or a puppet so that that way we don't have to worry about this pesky thing called the rights of the people or national sovereignty not the first time we ever did a coup in a country not the first time. Yeah, they're you know they're not really a democracy if you include the West Bank in there, are they? I mean, well, you can say they're the not West occupying. Bank, Israel wants to give the West Bank okay. back. All they're asking okay. for is a recognition, which no Palestinian okay. official has ever Fine. made. Okay, well, look, it's the world's most one-sided fist fight. I mean, at this point, I mean, Gaza's being blown up. What remains of it? What remains of it? Truly, what does remain of Gaza? And as for the West Bank, I mean, there are horror stories of uh, militias going into people's houses and shooting them. You know, when Bassem Youssef was being interviewed by Piers Morgan, do do bloody well condemn Hamas. You know, he brought the story about the olive trees. I didn't know those olive trees in the West Bank are 800 years old. And then you hear the horror story of these trees that are 800 years old being ripped apart. And then, oh, cement is being put in where they were at. 800 years gone like that fine the let me recognition just that israel has a right to exist as a jewish state that's all they wanted okay that's well you want. add in a jewish state yasser arafat recognized the right to exist under 1967 Not as a jewish state oh oh now it has to be said as a jewish state too okay fine well, well just course. okay fine uh, okay um so i mean if, if, we recognize, about if you want to say the danger of israel not existing i think actually the current course which you've pledged to support as president is probably the biggest risk to israel not existing let, but the point i was making before the point i was making before let me just finish let me just finish my point and then i'll give you the last word okay, okay. the point i was making before is that look uh, um, you talk about being a sharp critic of these neoconservatives. And if you go read the, the letter, A Clean Break, which was written by uh, Richard Pearl and uh, David Wormser, okay? And this is what outlined in 1996 the desire to fight the war in Iraq. And you know who that was written to, right? It wasn't written yeah, to Bill it Clinton. The PNAC, it was the PNAC document. Well, no, um, but specifically A Clean Break was written to yeah. Benjamin Netanyahu. This is, they're very much all involved. And look, sir. Well, and, why are you trying to connect me to Benjamin and Yahoo? I'm not trying like to connect the, you. I don't because like he's the cons. Because he's I the prime like minister of the country who you're pledging to fund their war. Yes. And no one wants to talk about good old Benji's domestic issues. Yes. Before October 7th, you know, there was, 
There was a time before October 7th. I know, controversial statement to say here, but, you know, good old Benjamin Netanyahu, things were all peachy in this country. A lot of people were tired of his shite. And what better way to cause a distraction than a wag the dog moon? Because, again, the New York Times, we talked about this. A lot of people in independent media talked about this. How there was a heads up for Israeli intelligence services. Hey, this attack's going to happen. And that was a year ago. Was a stand-down order given? I mean, Gaza is an open-air prison. It's the world's most one-sided fist fight. I mean, there's large concrete walls, watchtowers, barbed wire fences, surveillance drones, security cameras, all that kind of good stuff. How do you see this? Uh, how do you not see this uh, haymaker coming your way? Unless you were told to back down, stand down. And now there's this unending war that's happening. And we hear from RFK Jr. willing to give all the money and resources to this forever war. I hope RFK Jr. realizes that even if one day, someday, because according to Benjamin Netanyahu, the war is going to go on until 2025. We're in February, the second month of the new year. Folks, 2025 is next year. We're in 2024. That man wants to... Wants the war to continue on 2025. We're almost close to 30,000 dead Palestinian men, women, and children. And this man here, RFK Jr., wants the war to go on. Say with me, folks. What could possibly go wrong? It's not like it's laying the foundations for the next war. So, of course, I have to bring up who he is. I'm saying Benjamin Netanyahu, the man who you are saying, who you said as president, you will support his war until the end. Give him everything they need. He has been since the 1990s lying to the American people, saying Iran is five years away from developing a nuclear weapon. Do you not have any misgivings about supporting someone in a foreign government who is lying the American people into a war which he wants us to fight, not them? It's not Israel who's going to be fighting a war with Iran. It's the young men in our country. Okay, let me let me just before we um, before we end, let me clarify. Okay. A things. One is I don't like Benjamin Netanyahu. I don't like the neocons. I don't want to be lumped in with them. I'm, I, 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 there's eighty percent of the Israeli public is now against Netanyahu. Uh, yes. OK, you could say that, but there are so many people, especially when the war started, who got up on a little hill and watched how Palestinian people were being blown up. You know, a lot of the residential homes are being destroyed, community centers destroyed, hospitals destroyed, refugee centers destroyed. Like the people have nowhere to go, Mr. RFK Jr. I mean, what do you expect the Palestinian people to do? I mean, are, I mean, at this point, how are we sure that the IDF is actually you know, really going after Hamas. It almost seems at this point it's just deliberate, unnecessary killing. And we've seen a lot of videos on social media, and the corporate media has tried its best to hide it, of people being shot by snipers or being hit by artillery strikes or drone strikes. What more can they do? There's so much food and supplies that need to get into Gaza so people don't die of starvation or die of exposure or, or die of disease. The doctors... At this point, I don't even know what they're doing to keep people alive. Must be a hell of a situation there, Mr. RFK Jr. 90% of them support the action in, uh, in Gaza as necessary to eliminate Hamas. Now, do I think that the action in Gaza could end up in the destruction of Israel, lead to a chain of events that ended up in the destruction of Israel. Do I worry about that? Yes. APAC has bought our politicians off, so that doesn't happen, right? But what we're witnessing here is the further occupation of Gaza. Now, there are talks of an eventual ceasefire, or at least that, releasing all the hostages on both sides, which would be a sight to be seen. Wouldn't that be nice? The people free? But why do I think somewhere along the line the war is going to get turned on again? It's going to happen again and more people will die. Notice that the president of the United States, Joe Biden, has remained silent on this issue. He says it's very sad and tragic. How sad. How very, very sad indeed. But still does nothing. Doesn't lift a single finger. 
doesn't raise an eyebrow because he knows that APEC is intertwined with his administration, just like how the Republican establishment doesn't care, just like how the Democratic establishment doesn't care, even though I wonder what people like AOC or Bernie Sanders would do. But nonetheless, all their rhetoric from 2016, 2018 and 2020 is just nothing but words, no follow through. So you can't expect anything from the, the Congressional Progressive Caucus to do anything. And seeing RFK Jr. as the independent candidate go all in for Israel just makes my heart sad because I have a bad feeling that third parties are going to flounder this year. I want to hold out for hope, but hope is the first path to disappointment. Do I worry that it could end up in a chain of events that could walk the world into World War III? Yes, I absolutely... Well, gee, maybe it's because Israel's doing that. Because... We've covered how there's talks about them wanting to go ahead and do military actions in Lebanon. Oh, doing some actions against Iran, Syria. What could go? What what could go wrong? So you're talking about a chain of events. Well, what 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 are the people of Gaza going to do? The people of Gaza do not have a grand army. The people of West Bank do not have a grand army. They're in absolute poverty. They're being kicked out of their homes. Well, what what do you expect them to do? Punch a tank? The human, the, the, the human will to do anything is phenomenal. But trust me, Anna, a regular person cannot pick up a tank. We're not in a Marvel Cinematic Universe. But the way our government is acting, especially with the war in Ukraine, the war in Yemen, now what, potential conflict with Iran? What could go wrong? It's already going to happen, RFK Jr. Absolutely believe that. Do I believe that it is a good choice? No. Do I believe that it is the best option available? Yes, because I don't. I think that kicking this down the road again, because the the the, the now the the demonstration of of strength that Hamas showed on October seventh, where you know three thousand air, sea, land with rockets, backpack missile systems, and the equipment that they're now receiving from. No one wants to talk about how there were weapons from Ukraine there too. You didn't think we'd forget about that, right? Hey, how do those weapons from Ukraine get into Gaza? You know, it's, it's kind, of, kind of rather suspicious, you know? Just just something to bring up. Just something that was kind of forgotten. Just want to make sure none of you people forget. From Iran and North Korea makes them a existential threat to Israel. And when they come back the next time, that you know, they're perfectly willing to have a ceasefire, of course. And they'll use that to rearm. They're going to increase their prestige around the world because, you know, the world admires them for that October 7th attack. What? And if you ask me what I would have done as president, it's not what would have happened now. What I would have done is I would have, first of all, I'd end the, the Ukraine war so that we can talk directly to Putin. I bring Xi in. I bring Putin in. I bring the Sisi in from Egypt. I bring Erdogan in from Turkey. And I'd say this war is not any of our interests. The, the Chinese and the Russians don't want to, you know, they don't want fundamentalist Islam conquering the Mideast and controlling the oil fields. They don't want that ultimately. We have a community of interest. If the Security Council the day after October 7th, on October 8th, had condemned Hamas, and had demanded the prosecution of their leadership for war crimes, and if if we then had pressured Cutter to arrest Ismail Hainea and Erdogan to arrest the leader. There is one quick correction I do want to make up here real quick. Uh, real quick. Uh, so there has been a little bit more of some fact checks into the Washington Post headline about Ukraine and Hamas weapon supply as being fake. However, knowing that CBS did do a documentary video a long time ago about the fact that uh, where do these weapons go and CBS was told to take that video down. It is important to remember that we still don't really have full accountability of all those weapons. Those tanks, those Humvees, those rifles, RPGs, mortars, all that kind of good stuff, all that good technology. Where do those weapons go? That's a question that needs to be asked. There's that are hiding in Ankara and brought them up to the world court 
then I think we'd be in a different world. What we did instead is we isolated Israel and we left them alone to solve the problem. And the only option they have, Dave, for solving this problem is very limited uh, military option. Very limited, which has led to the deaths of, what, 27,000 plus civilians now at this point? Very limited indeed. They had no choice. They had no choice. They had they had to bomb everything. And it would be my job as president to make sure this never happened. Make sure that they had other options rather than the military. But we yeah. don't have anybody in the White House today who who you know who understands even how to begin that process. We're still living in a bipolar world where you know the America is superpower. Everybody's got to do what we say. And they will not go and reach out to other leaders and say, let's convene and solve this problem together. And, you know, anytime there was talk about peace deals or, you know, understanding, the United States was quick to kind of vote it down. Always siding with Israel. RFK, you, you want to weigh in on that? Ways where we can find common ground with each other. And I think that that is necessary now. And that, you know, it, it is tragic where we are, but I don't. And the reason I posted that post on October 7th, because I knew what was going to happen. I knew the world was going to turn against Israel. Oh, yes. The world was going to turn against Israel. How sad. Well, I mean, the world is turning against Israel because it's committing war crimes. War crimes. Men, women, children dying. Being killed. What 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 is what what else is there to say, RFK? You know, as I, I will say this, you know, I was I was impressed initially early on with his uh, beginning stages of his campaign. However, as time progressed forward and his uh, connections to Israel and that apartheid government became abundantly clear, I think it's fair enough to say we all kind of got a little bit sick to our stomachs. A lot of us did. I just want to pull up this other video segment here. Just, 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 just a short part of it, just so all of you can see it too. Oh, they want to move the population. Well, Netanyahu is going, and, and I know you can say you're a critic of Netanyahu, but you support Israel. But at the same time, it's like the guy is the longest serving prime minister and the current prime minister of the country. So if you're supporting the country, you kind of are supporting, at least to some degree, what he's doing right now. And it is unconscionable. It, it is the, the worst humanitarian catastrophe in the world right now. And the idea that you, who are supposed to be the anti-neocon, anti-war presidential candidate, are immediately on October 7th, before we even had an investigation, before we even knew what happened there, you immediately say what well, basically you said everything they say about Ukraine. You said it was an unprovoked attack, which like, come on, give me a break. An attack from Gaza against Israel is unprovoked. And then you said we have to support them in whatever it takes. Now, we all know what's happening in Gaza. You know, they, they the water is controlled by Israel. The power is controlled by Israel. They've been occupied for 70 plus years, longer than that constantly losing their lands, constantly being under attack. You know, put yourself in the people in uh, in Gaza's shoes for a second. You know, if you're constantly being oppressed and being slapped around, you're not going to like the person that's doing that to you. Well, look, sir, we're watching it right now. This is whatever it takes. Just women and children dying under rubble. Every day you can't go on social media without seeing another video of some baby dying. This is what we're supposed, after the last 20 years of disastrous wars, we got to support the next one. I mean, sir, this is, this is like a biblical level of evil. And, and why? Why should we as Americans have to fund this? Why should we have to give them a blank check? I'm sorry. Right. It's been I mean, long enough. A lot of different issues. And can I now respond? Sure. Yeah, them? sure. Okay. First of all, the idea that Israel created the deprivation in Gaza is, is nonsense. Israel left Gaza in 2006. It doesn't occupy Gaza. There is no occupation. There is no occupation, even though people are, are still being occupied and blown up and killed and exterminated. So we gotta say we gotta call it how we see it, and it's quite clear that none of the Israeli forces are going to be leaving anytime soon. The overall plan is to to hold the land and not leave. It left them and said, you know, and it removed all the settlers. 
Oh, when Israel, you know, wants to make peace, it has shown its willingness to remove all the settlers and even remove the graves of Jews who were there. So there's no Jews left in Gaza. It removed all the IDF from Gaza, and it said, and it gave Gaza. And not only that, it gave and put it them on the border. Uh, let, let me just finish. Sure. It, Israel um, uh, offered to uh, to rebuild for free the port of Gaza to make it the Singapore of the West. So really, they were going to do that. But what else were they going to do? Probably remove people out of their homes, force people out like what's happening in the West Bank. You know, maybe, you know, RFK, I I, I would say this. Look, the Dave Smith, the Dave, I think a very good job because I watched the full interview in its full entirety. And I think he did a, a very good job for the most part, uh, you know, talking to him, especially in regards to the situation in Gaza, you know, the best he can. Each host runs their show their own way. But uh, it would be a sight to see if, uh, oh, I don't know. Maybe you talk to Basim Youssef or Max Blumenthal or Aaron Maté or Glenn Greenwald. At least hear them out. Talk to them. They could critically challenge you even further in regards to overall the apartheid actions of Israel. It'd be a sight to see. Would he follow through with, hey, let's have democracy in the chat. Type one if you think RFK Jr. will ever follow through with that interview with Max Blumenthal. Or maybe with Basim Youssef or Aaron Monte, what a sight that would be. Type two for no, he's not going to do that. Uh, Gaza should be one of the richest nations in the in the Mediterranean. There's miles of white sand beaches. It is. It's not a desert. It's an oasis. That's why the Philistines, who were from Greece, colonized it because it was it had rich agricultural lands. The Israelis had had built a very, very extensive irrigation system to irrigate that land. They had put out of business all the illegal wells that were threatening the, um, the, the, the water table with salt water infiltration. And they built 4,000 hothouses, state-of-the-art hothouses, and then donated them to the people of Gaza when they left as a gift to make Gaza completely self food self-sufficient. Uh, they then, the international aid community, then poured in an unprecedented tsunami of cash to the people of Gaza. Oh, the, after World War II, we rebuilt German, we rebuilt all of the 17 nations of Europe with the Marshall Plan. We gave the people of Europe $48 per capita a piece. That's about $623 in 2023 dollars. We've given to Gaza, the international aid community, 8,600. So, But who controls the money? Yes, you could say you gave the money to Gaza. It's just like just like all those, uh, you know, organizations, group like, yes, we're here to help out the refugees. Yes, we're here, here to help out all these wonderful people. But does the money ever get to the people? I ask the people of Lahaina, hey, hey, wh why are some of y'all in hotels? I thought all this aid, this first aid was coming your way, these resources. They only got a one-time $700. Yeah, that's that's going to go far. 13 times what we what we spent to rebuild Europe. And what's happened? As, as you say, is an open-air prison with 47% unemployment. Why is that? Is that the fault of Israel? No. It's the Partially. fault of Hamas, which has taken that money, stolen it for its its leaders, Ismail Haimea, who is the head of Hamas is, according to Forbes, has a net worth of five billion dollars. Yasser Arafat died a billionaire. His wife gets a twenty-two million dollar uh, uh, annual subsidy from the Palestinian Authority. Mahmoud Abbas, the current head of the Palestinian Authority, is a billionaire. His sons have two seven hundred and fifty million dollars. The, the top three guys at, at Hamas have a collective network of $11 billion. So this is a kleptocracy. They're stealing from their people. And then the rest of that money, instead of building an economy, an agricultural system, making it a, a, a center for commerce, for peace, for prosperity for their people, instead, they've used that money to build an underground city, 300 miles of tunnels to bring in. To you know, it's all this talk about this great maze, this underground city. You know, to build something of that magnitude, 
You have to show it. Show us this great maze. Show us this great underground city of skyscrapers and hidden hidden facilities and places that people are just going to come out of nowhere and just destroy everything. You know, we have yet to find those rest of those hostages soon. I mean, I hope they are found, and I hope many of them are still alive. Because, you know, if there are any kind of underground places, you know, there, there, there could be a horrific possibility that the people are trapped and they can't get out. But also, who controls the aid going into Gaza? That's the key thing. All of the aid and the resources going in and out. Is it Hamas or is it Israel? It's Israel. To bring in uh, 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 weapons, rockets, etc. They they have torn up the irrigation system that made it agriculturally completely self sufficient. They tore up hundreds of miles of pipes and used those pipes to make rockets with. They ended the regulation of the wells so that now anybody can build a well and the it has poisoned all the agricultural lands of Gaza with salt water. So this is what Hamas has done to it, her people, to the people. Okay, but I, I mean, look, I say they need to be okay. eliminated, and then they raise each generation. The, the question the is, nobody let me finish uh, with uh, the uh, biggest aspiration that they. Oh, David, hang on, man. You just need to make yourself a cup of tea, and you'll be a okay. You can have to kill a Jew. The strap on. They make kitty suicide vests. They they indoctrinate them from. Well, you know, Israel also indoctrinates too. Like hate is being taught by both sides. So it's not it's not just Hamas. You know, there have been reports and a lot of people have shown it already on social media of the hatred and indoctrination towards the people of Palestine. We've all seen the videos on social media, the horrific imagery of Israelis mocking and making fun of Palestinian men, women, children who are in absolute fear of their lives, running, you know, using racial stereotypes and all that other uh, horrific stuff. I mean, it's already out there on social media, on the TikTok, on the Twitter, on the Instagram. Don't pretend it doesn't exist. It's not like hatred and bigotry can't be taught all around. It's human history 101. All humans do it. We're the world heavyweight champions of hating ourselves. No wonder the whole world's gone nuts. It's always been this way. From kindergarten, this is a, you know, an end. Israel did not put up the barriers until they started. There was an open border there for many, many years, throughout the 70s. Israel only put up the wall when commandos started coming over and butchering Israelis. What so other you're talking about back when, back when the IDF was occupying Gaza. You're saying they didn't have the wall up yet. Uh, okay. The, the asymmetry oh, here. Yeah, and the, oh, the oh, but, listen, well, hey, but, David, but hold on. You're talking... Hey, Oh, because you're blaming that Israel for creating an open air prison, and that's baloney. It is total baloney. It's not an open air prison. Last I checked, it is hell. The fact that even Charlie Kirk in the early days of the war even said it. And look, I could disagree with anyone who's conservative Republican, but he brought up a very interesting question. Was a stand down order given before October 7th? Because everything seems rather suspicious now that Israel is there in Gaza in full regalia. All their tanks and artillery, all helicopters, drones, and military forces are there occupying the land. It's almost as if there needed to be a great distraction because there were some domestic problems impacting the government of Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. I know I've said this before, but i got to bring it up again. Was there a stand-down order given? They were given a year's heads up about, hey, this is happening. Never before has there ever been a moment in human history where a government would purposely lie to its people. Oh, say that would never happen. Say it ain't so. Yes. <laughs> okay, well, listen, there's, there's an asymmetry here because you're talking to me about how bad Hamas is. And like, yes, I agree. Hamas is a very bad organization. But I'm also not standing here arguing that Hamas is doing a great job and that we, America, better fund Hamas no, in some aggression. Yes. Hold you on. You made an assertion. No, no, I'm no. I'll... You. I'll I'll go back that's, to this. It's not, but let's just agree. It's that not assertion an assertion. It is not true. No. What assertion have I made that's not true? You Listen, said Israel turned Gaza into an open air prison. No, I'm not saying they turn. Yes, it is. And look, the the reason why international why, human. Why, why don't you blame Egypt? Egypt has a border with. If there was I no, do. 
Now, here's the situation. I am actually going to try my very best to get Nico House on the show. Uh, he did reach out to me, and he was recently in Egypt. And in a recent hotspot video that I played, um, he talked about overall numerous refugees that are in Egypt, not only from Palestine, but from Syria, Iraq, and other regions. Egypt can only do so much. They only could take care of so many refugees. There is a refugee crisis in the Middle East because, again, of these ongoing forever wars. And you would think RFK Jr., in his infinite wisdom, would be aware of that. Now, uh, in all fairness to, again, uh, Dave Smith, I am going to click, copy, and paste uh, this full interview in the live stream chat so all of you can see it in its full capacity right there so all of you can see it. I personally think it is worthwhile for all of you to at least make time out of your day to see it and spend time to at least watch it. There's a lot more that RFK Jr. does say about Israel. And uh, to his credit, Dave Smith does push back. Is this a death blow to RFK Jr.'s campaign? Mm. If there were any anti-war people still left or trying to hold on for hope, uh, they probably are going to abandon ship pretty soon. Now, Americans do want another choice. But RFK Jr. has made his stance very clear with Israel. And I do have to then call into question just really how authentic he is in other foreign wars. Is he truly anti-war? And from what I have seen from my colleagues and what we have seen from his actions, it's all words. All words. Remember, RFK Jr. is part of a political dynasty, the Kennedys. And when you have dynastic families, they're all going to be having that same kind of mindset. They've all had some history with Washington, D.C. It's just not the Kennedys. There's the Bushes, the Clintons, and all the other fantastic families that rule over the United States. And, of course, their connections with lobby groups and political organizations. I really wish that we did have true representation and maybe a possibility of having an actual democracy. But I'm not expecting much from RFK Jr., His actions and his statements, especially for being on board with Israel and its military operations, uh, is a big no for me. And the anti-war movement, thankfully, we are seeing it come back, kind of, sort of, maybe, has made it very clear how they view RFK or anyone else that's for the forever wars. It doesn't have to be this way. As I speak right now, the bombs are still dropping. People are still dying of starvation. And who knows what the overall end conclusion of this conflict will be. But when the dust finally settles, the war is still going to happen. No, it's not just going to be just firing gunshots, but the next generation will be fighting it. Until there's a real option for peace. Now, there were opportunities for peace in our time. But we're not going to get it. Not with people like RFK Jr. or Biden or anyone else part of the two-party system, be it Democrat or Republican. You're not going to expect anything from our leaders. They're just going to give us words. It's up to the people to show the rest of the world that we're not for this. There's a genocide happening in Gaza. And it's not being stopped. RFK Jr., good luck to you in 2024. You're going to need it, but you don't got my support. With that being said, I want to thank you guys for joining me for this late evening live stream. I hope all of you are doing well. So let's have democracy in the chat. I want to see where all of you stand in here. Shout out to our Rumble audience as well. Uh, Fupa King, Kitty Suicide Vest. Yes, that's kind of crazy. Uh, Fupa King says he needs a good slap in the face. Yep. I hear all of you. I hear all of you. So let's have democracy in the chat. Let's 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 have open democracy. Overall, uh, again, those are just two highlights from the Dave Smith interview with RFK Jr. Are you still on board with Team RFK Jr. 2024? Type three for yes, Kit. I still am on board. Maybe he'll change his mind. There's still hope. Don't give up. Type four for no. I'm not going to do that, man. No, that's that's a no for me, dog. I wonder how many fours we'll get in the chat. I wonder, I wonder, I wonder. I wonder how many fours we will will get in the chat. 
but I'm seeing a lot of vomiting. Okay, good to see all you beautiful people in here. Going to even add in my four gators as well. Good to see all of you. <laughs> Shout out to our moderators keeping the peace. Shout out to all you wonderful people joining here, us here as well. I felt it was necessary to at least give my commentary on this. Uh, please check out Dave Smith's full interview with RFK Jr. Uh, I'm going to reach out to Dave Smith, see if we can have him on the show as well. Uh, nonetheless, folks, please take good care of yourselves and each other. We got ourselves a, a great show next week, starting Monday, 9 a.m. Central and Tuesday, 9 a.m. Central on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday as well, because we're live every Monday to Friday at 9 a.m. Central on YouTube, Rockfin, Rumble, Odyssey, and Kick. If you want to help out Hardlands Media even further, please support us on Patreon. We do need the support to maintain our infrastructure, update our websites, and continue with all of our other services so we can still keep on doing our content. Yes, also Hardlands Media, we will be covering the DNC convention coming here in August. More details on that, too, sometime at the middle of this month nearing the end of this month we will go into further discussion about that so we will be keeping all of you our supporters aware check us out on our discord page as well follow us on instagram facebook and twitter i want to wish all of you a very safe and wonderful saturday night we got music by jesse jett who is again a champion speaker of truth to power and since we did talk about gaza israel colonialism what better song to close off this wonderful episode than with the Kings of Colony by Jesse Jett. He's a speaker of truth to power. You guys and gals have been awesome. And everyone, all the best. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, everyone here who joined us on YouTube and on Rumble. Peace to all of you. And let us all do what we can to someday have a better future and build a better future. Now more than ever, let's make it happen. Take care, folks. Now what to following that idolatry that's just fake? You tolerate that's not fair. The kings of colony watched autonomy make our graves. The kings of colony know no policy, only rave. Now, once you fall asleep, it won't bother you what they say. But the kings of colony, while they slaughter, they still complain. We say, please color me still too solemnly, still too plain. All hail economy, praise the pharmacy, sees in flames. They're buying up Hawaii, and the smoke's not even cleared. Those vultures smelled the fire and an enterprise appeared. Investment opportunities were melted down. Communities leave vacant space. BlackRock has been lusting for for years. The council meets in private and they don't discuss survivors. Concerns among construction groups are all the hyena hears. They'll wander through your city with this mocking sword of pity next to Oprah and her camera crew who tore the trail of tears. Where footage flows as freely as the stream of liquid steel and the pools of pure aluminum that trickled down your wheels and Biden's here to say he knows exactly how it feels because he had a kitchen fire once and had to miss a meal and people still believe that piece of shit deserves your vote like he's not why supplies are being smuggled in by boat like he's not why our citizens were forced to stay and roast and he can't unfreeze your funding folks because Azov needs it most I'll bet my every dollar Biden watched it with a smile I'll bet he knows the whereabouts of every missing child He's just the kind of man who lives to trample something tribal, collecting culture's corpses just to throw them on the pile. Like he and all his buddies didn't dream about the day when those who dared defy the donor class were cleared away. When home insurance triples and you can't afford to stay and your land falls to the hands of those whose windfall fanned the flames, the state will take Lahaina and they'll bastardize its name and tourism will swarm it all the same. You see the state we left, Lahaina, shows the ground rules of the game, the planes that in the night ignite the planes.
and if questions raised that reckon the potential use of lasers, I suggest you take a closer shave by way of Occam's razor. And if those civilians stood between this country and its gains, then there's really nothing further to explain. Because you may know this already, if you truly know our past, but it ain't the first occasion and it will not be the last where Americans are kettled in and made to bear the blast, are barricaded in and left for ash. How many in Lahaina now are lying there awake and still can hear the city we left leveled in our wake? They still hear all the people that we let the fire take, instructed from above to stay in place. So look to the horizon, because a fire comes for you. Desire made incarnate of the power-hungry few who instructed the police to not let anybody through, to barricade them in, and so they do.